Good morning. It's Miss Keish with Journey of the Word Ministries. I'm popping in to try and do a midweek message. I'm going to be using um, God's promises for a fruitful life. My daughter gave this to me quite a few years ago. Um, these scriptures are tiny, so I obviously need to use my glasses. The This one says that we are not expected to, to do the best, but be our best. I added a little bit in there. but um, So... To get through the rest of the week, think about you don't have to outdo anyone. I'm not in competition with the next man. I am just working on me. And I'm going to take the best of what I have today and get myself to the highest level possible to present myself to the Lord. 2 Timothy 2 and 15 says to do your best to present yourself to God as one approved. So if you're doing your best to present yourself to God, it's like I said, so step by step, day by day, only concern is you because you are responsible for you and control what you do. So just as um, if you wanted to get a new job, if you needed a, wanted a raise, you're going to work your hardest to achieve that accomplishment. So in presenting ourselves to God each day, do the things in each mannerism, not just reading your Bible, not just praying. Um, things such as during work, if you're presented with an, an a object or a choice to make, and one of them is clearly against the principles of God, you do not do that. In your intimate friendships or relationships, don't lie, don't be manipulative, don't be abusive, whether it's physical or emotional. Um, don't steal things from, from your friends or from work. I mean, it's really not that hard to be a moral good person. Morals alone is not going to get you into heaven. That's not what I'm saying. But it's a step. And you're applying the principles of God to your life. If you have the spiritual along with the principles, you're on a good roll. So you are presenting yourself every day to God to have a look at. So at the end of the day, let's say God reviewed all of your choices. But the tools that you have for today... Don't be worried about where you want to get to and what your goal is just for today. You use those tools to the best of your ability to do nothing against God's principles. That's presenting yourself in the best way. Don't want to outdo the next person. We're not trying to outshine because we want everybody to win, okay? Uh, the next sentence says, A workman who does not need to be ashamed and who correctly handles the word of truth. So a workman in Hebrew represents a strength. And it's usually in, in reference to such work as like um, carpenters, worksmiths, um, artisans, things that have very particular jobs that they have to do where they have to do each step in the manner in which it was and make sure different pieces fit. They have to follow the process. They have to trust the process is going to have the outcome that's desired. So we have to trust the process of God and know that the outcome desire will be for our greater good. Romans 8 and 28 said, For all those who love, things will work together for the greater good of all those who love him. He's going to intertwine every reaction, every action, every outside causation in your life. He's going to intertwine it together to get you to point A where he desires you to be. So you have to trust the process just as the workman does. And you have to follow it accordingly. <clears throat> It says that, and who correctly handles the truth? The truth is a hard pill to swallow for a lot of us. The truth, a lot of us want to deny so that we don't have to apply it to our life. But that's not how it is. Once you know the truth, you attempt to do better with the tools in your possession. Okay? Sometimes you don't get certain tools until you go through certain things. But keep in mind that you, I know doing this is wrong. But I'm continuing on this path. You can pray to God. To give you the strength and the understanding of why this needs to stop and work on doing it for yourself. There are many things that um, people don't want to believe is wrong, but it is. Um, you will hear some people who like to indulge or cheat say, uh, you can have you can have as many men as you women as you want. You can have more men because men are doing it. It's okay. This is a different time. Why are there so many women to men? No, it's not okay. And you're just trying to have your, your lifestyle that you're choosing. Um, you hear um, people, the homosexual homosexual couples stating that uh, 
love is love and God loves everybody and there's nothing wrong with this because we found love and that's what God teaches us. Love is love, but there are different levels of love that belong accordingly. You have to trust the process. Um, if it's truly just about love, then understand that God will bring that correct person to you and it will not be the same sex as you because if we continue down that line, we will cease to exist because you cannot reproduce children. So at the end of the day, it does not make any sense. So we can't twist the word of truth to meet our session. You have to correctly apply it. So you would have to acknowledge that you are struggling in this area, acknowledge that this is your desire that you're having right now, and that you know it's not appropriate, and pray to God to heal you from this desire and put you on the right path so that you can find your your true loved one. You may love them, it may be true love, but it is a platonic, it should be a platonic love. And we should remind ourselves that oftentimes the same sex as us knows what we know what we want because we're the same thing. So you'll fall easily, a lot more easier into stride with that person and it'll feel right. But it's like a deception. It's, it's not the same as, let's say, a, a relative or a sibling who didn't know they were it and they just clicked. But it was because they had the same interests. Um in hindsight, the, the same bloodline. So you don't have the same bloodline, but you're the same gender. You have the same desires and wants, and so it's easier to please. Uh, couples that are wanting to, to cheat, it's just, it's lust. It's not love. You don't love both of those people. It's greed. You have to apply the truth correctly. You don't, you majority of us don't even comprehend that in those stories where they say that they have more than one wife that those households are separate, that they must financially be able to care for both of those households uh, and not on welfare, food stamps. And you must carry the burden of both of those households smoothly. Um, we say and do a lot of things because we want to. We ignore the truth or say it's not applicable anymore because times has changed. That's earnestly what the problem is or one of the problems with people staying away from God or not wanting to read the Bible anymore. Uh, it was written thousands of years ago. It's in the past. It's not applicable. Well, the truth can never be negated. God is the truth. Love is God. And God is the word. And the word is what fills us. And God is not a man, so he shall lie. No matter what century is written in, the facts never change. Lying, killing, stealing, destroying, manipulating is always the same thing. So you can look to the Bible scriptures. You can change those stories in your mind, apply it to modern terminology because everything that went on then is going on now. History just repeats itself. And then you'll find some direction and where you need to go when you're lost. That's applying the truth correctly. So um, at the end of the day, the midweek message is supposed to be some encouragement. I went a little long there. Uh, what I would recommend is giving your best effort and putting your best foot forth to God and asking him for help. Thank you for joining Journey of the Word Ministries, home of every name known to God. I hope you have a blessed day.